so to give you a brief introduction um <clears throat> Kiran sir mentioned that we we did uh, completed two workshops before. One is the introduction to data science, and the other one is introduction to AI. In both those workshops, I concentrated mainly on a very high level overview of what data science is, what artificial intelligence is, where we use data science versus where we use um artificial intelligence or deep learning but for this workshop i chose a very narrow topic and i want to go deeper into the math behind it and as well as trying to give a complete picture of how a particular algorithm is implemented in the industry first we will try to understand what a algorithm means and how that algorithm is trying to actually give me one hour is done and please stay on mute uh, yeah thank you so we will first try to see what's the math behind the scenes then we will take a small use case and see how to build a model or how to we how do we use that algorithm to come up with a model then finally how do we make use of it that's where application are implementing it in a real world situation comes into the picture so i would try to cover as much as possible among all of this the given the time permits we would all the we would go all the way up to even see a small application if possible so that's going to be the agenda main agenda for the next 3 days a uh, couple of instructions on logistics i know there are a lot of people um on youtube as well um you might have some questions for people on zoom they can post the questions um on the chat window uh, whenever i get to see an opportunity to answer those question i'll answer them at the appropriate time we will hold on for uh, around roughly around 15 minutes by the end of the session maybe that 15 minutes we will purely use for q and a that's going to be the approach for every day for the next 3 uh, days right so feel free to post your question um, i think kiran sir uh, always does an amazing job to take the questions from youtube and post here i i i know so kiran sir please do that i will keep a tab on all the questions that's coming in uh, if possible i'll answer them immediately or i'll wait for the appropriate time to answer them okay fine so with uh, a little bit of expectation from my side is people who are familiar with the introduction to data science or people who have attended the introduction to data science before they would be able to easily pick up some of the basics that i would be talking but if anyone who has not been introduced to data science before who doesn't know um, anything in data science if i mention a particular topic and if you are not familiar with it feel free to just comment in the chat window so that i can go try to go a little bit deeper elaborate and explain that topic for you second we will be using python as the programming language for the demonstration purpose you do not have to know python in and out for, for to just follow this workshop having knowledge in python or python programming prior to this is definitely an added advantage so that would help you to easily follow the code that i'm going to write and maybe uh, take the 
uh, data that we are going to use here and start practicing on your own. So if you are not familiar with Python, I would strongly recommend you start slowly learning Python because in the world of data science and AI, Python is the most heavily used programming language. Others are there, but due to the convenience, due to the uh, simplicity, Python is our preferred choice as a programming language. Okay, so that's on the introduction. So now let's jump jump on to why we choose this particular topic. What made me to choose this particular topic, especially trees. Tree-based models are very popular in data science applications. These are the heavily used models or algorithms in the industry. One of the reason why trees are so popular is their simplicity. They are very easy to understand. And you will see why when we actually go and see an example for that. Second, they are more versatile. In the world of data science, we have different types of problems. And the most common problems that we try to solve is either a regression problem or a classification problem. Of course, there are a few more, but for now, let's stick to only these two. Tree-based algorithms are capable of solving both the type of the problems. Either it is a regression problem or it is a classification problem. Let me, I, uh, there might be few people who are not introduced to data science before. So for the sake of them, let's talk a little bit in, in detail about what's a regression problem and what's a classification problem. That's how we would slowly get involved into the applications of data science, right? So, I, I think most of you might have heard this word called prediction or a word called predictive analytics, right? Weather prediction um, is a commonly known application for all of us. We use a lot of apps on our smartphones, weather related apps, they tell us whether it's going to rain today, they tell us what's going to be the temperature today, they tell us what's going to be the wind speeds, etc. Right? The word prediction means very simple. We need to know something that's going to happen in future. So for example, Will it rain tomorrow? So we want to know an event that's going to happen in the future time. Or what's going to be the temperature tomorrow? Is it going to be 33, 36, 37, right? So all of these are typically called as predictions. Now these predictions are two types. One, when we are predicting a number or when we are actually predicting something like a event, they are very different. Let's say when we are predicting a number, predicting a number is typically called as regression. What's going to be the temperature tomorrow? So temperature is a number, 33 degrees centigrade, 34 degrees centigrade, 34.5 degrees centigrade. So we are trying to predict a number. So predicting a number typically falls into the regression. Predicting a event, 
event is generally like whether it will rain or not it is like s or no we are not predicting a number like how many millimeters of rainfall or how many centimeters of rainfall no that's that's not what we are trying to predict we are predicting whether a event will happen or it will not happen right so this is also typically called as predicting a class for example in healthcare predicting if someone is going to fall sick of a particular uh, virus someone is going to have a cardiovascular disease someone is going to be diabetic in future like in 6 months in one year is this person going to be diabetic or not right so these type of predictions are typically called as classification when we are predicting a event it is called as classification when we are actually predicting a number it is typically called as regression that's the main difference between these two both are predictive analytics for example if you want to predict what's going to be the price of a resale house somebody is trying to sell their house what is going to be the resale value of it in india this is not popular in other countries these type of estimations are very popular so if somebody is trying to sell their house they can go to a portal they can give the details of the house and they can get what is the estimated price that they can quote for that house given the area of the house what's the construct what's the age of construction all those things okay on the other side like i said predicting whether a customer will leave a business it's called as churn or it's also called as attrition right so this is one of the most popular predictive analytics that is performed in the industry why every business would like to retain their existing customers losing a customer is losing a losing the business altogether right so every business would want to know ahead in time who are the customers who may leave the business for any reason the reasons can be different but knowing something that is about to happen into the future helps us to take some actions that's what is called as predictive analytics knowing something that is about to happen in future for example if you know that tomorrow it is going to rain maybe you you would plan something like if you are going out you might take car instead of bike you might even not buy a ticket for some some uh, some sports event that is happening because it, anyway it's not going to happen due to rain right so these are called as event or data driven decision making so when we predict something that is about to happen into the future and we know to certain extent with certain confidence that this is going to happen we can make decisions based on that another example is if we predict a person is going to be diabetic one year down the line now we can tell that person hey you are at risk of having diabetes so from now on you need to follow these instructions you need to keep a tab on the diet that you are following you have to eat this you cannot eat this your daily routine should be like this you should spend x amount of time every day in some physical activity maybe we may not totally avoid the fall of diabetes on that person by by the next one year 
at least we can just prolong that a little longer and maybe even reduce the effect of it if this person doesn't is not aware of that he is a he or she is at risk of diabetes one year down the lane they might not follow all these instructions which would probably lead to uh, early onset of diabetes and even sometimes extreme uh, sickness due to the diabetes right so these are what we call as predictive analytics and this is what we do in data science so when we when we say data science applications data science application means we try to predict something that is about to happen in future and when we predict that we will be able to derive some actions which will help us either to avoid the event or in some cases to reduce the damage of that event whether is an a good good example for this weather prediction we can only predict weather for example if you are familiar with the concept of weather predictions that are generally generated for cyclones cyclones are very powerful weather events now predicting a cyclone doesn't mean that we can stop that from happening it's definitely beyond the control of human beings but predicting a cyclone when it is going to form where it is going to form what path it is going to travel what will be the intensity of it where it is going to hit the land will minimize the damage you can evacuate people who are living in the low lying areas you can move people to safe and strong shelters that way at least loss of life can be reduced so that's that's the main work that we do in the field of data science okay now coming back to the topic that we chose today the tree based models how can we predict this where are these predictions going to come from the predictions are typically going to be generated from learning from the past for example if you stay in a in a particular place for a very long time you try to understand how the weather patterns are in that particular location and based on that you can say hey today it's going to rain i know this is month of july i can see some clouds it's very humid and it's very hot the wind is in this particular direction i think we would be able to i think we would see rain by end of the day today that's nothing but a prediction but how did you predict that it's going to rain today by learning from something in the history because you have stayed there for quite some time you started to observe the data slowly okay what month of the year it is what is the wind pattern what is uh, how how are the clouds looking like what's the temperature today how is the humidity looking like so these are all called as the data and using this data you slowly learn when it will rain and that's how you are trying to make your predictions right so that's exactly what we are going to do today but with a slightly different data but with a particular set of algorithms they are called as the tree based algorithms the tree algorithms are many types there is one popular tree based algorithm which we will learn today and others i will just uh, mention the names so that you can try to refer to them you can try to learn them on your own but one of them the most heavily used tree based algorithm we would be like covering covering that in detail here in the today's session second there is one more concept very important concept when in the data science it is called as ensembles ensembles mean collection we are going to 
combine a lot of these type of trees to make even even better decision even accurate decisions right so that's why trees and ensembles forms the major chunk of the work in data science so if if you have to if you have to master yourself in data science then tree based methods ensembles are the biggest or or the or the most heavily used algorithms so that's why i choose this topic so getting familiarity with a tree based model and then trying to go to a slightly higher level of complexity which is called as ensembles if you are familiar with these two topics believe me you definitely know a lot more in data science if you can master these two topics itself that's the reason i i prefer to choose this tree based topics and ensembles for this particular workshop uh some of you raising hands um i don't know whether you have a question or you have some problem you can post your question on the screen sorry on the chat window if you have i will be able to answer them a couple of them are saying screen not visible i hope for the others the screen um, i'm already sharing my my screen they're able to see kiran sir can you see, can you confirm if you are able to see my screen yes, okay sir. thank you thank you sir uh just it could be a technical issue on your side just try to re log in you should be able to see that fine now let's let's directly jump into um uh, into our first algorithm that is the decision tree so as i said in this particular workshop we will try to focus on decision tree and one of the popular decision tree algorithm that's called as classification and regression trees and in the ensembling in the ensembles we have two major topics one is called as bagging another one is called as boosting bagging based on the concept called bagging we have an algorithm called as random forest which is the most heavily used algorithm in the industry and based on the concept of boosting we have a hell lot of them uh, there are different types of boosting techniques we will not be able to cover all of them i just want people to be aware that so many algorithms exist based on the concept called boosting i'll explain the concept called boosting and we will pick one of one of this maybe we will pick gradient boosting as our example algorithm and we will try to show you with a small demo how we can use a classification and regression tree in short we call this as cart c a r t bagging and in bagging we will pick random forest and in boosting we will choose the gradient boosting algorithm okay fine now let's see how cart works here i am going to explain cart with a classification example but yeah as i said cart is capable of performing both a classification as well as a regression problem as i mentioned a little while ago regression problem is when you are trying to predict a number and classification problem is when you are trying to predict a event or a class so this is a good example to understand what a classification means here i have pasted a sample data just a sample data not all the records just only few records there are four variables uh in in uh database you might be mentioning this as columns columns variables features they are all mean same either we call them as features or we call them as variables in data science so on this data 
we have four variables. So this is variable one, variable two, variable three, variable four, or we also call them as features. This variable here, default, this is my target variable. I want to predict this variable. And the rest three, these are called as input variables. Generally, target variable is represented with Y and input variables are represented with X. Let's say we represent this as X1, this is X2, and this is X3. I choose this very small data set. Generally, in, when we build predictive analytics, when we, when we build data science models, we would be using a very complex large data sets, which would go into uh, lakhs of observations, hundreds of variables. But it's difficult to explain with such data sets. And that's the reason why I choose this very simple basic example to explain how this data given to a cart algorithm generates this generates this tree over here just to see okay so this data set when passed through a cart algorithm this tree is generated so how this data is being used to learn to generate this tree is going to be the today's main topic of discussion. Okay, fine. If you notice here, this tree, this tree has certain information printed. And this tree is typically used for the decision making. Let's say in future, we get one more observation. We don't know the value of this target variable. We know what is the value of these. So this is no, this is 1000, and this is uh, 10,000. Now, based on these three values, can we predict what is the what is going to be the value for this target column called the default? That's called prediction. But how can we try to predict what going what is going to be the value of default by using these three observations? We don't know. For that, first we have to learn from this data. Of course, we would have more data, but we have to learn from this data. So the learning is going to be done by a particular algorithm. In this case, it is, go it is going to be a CART algorithm. And this CART algorithm has generated this tree. So let's first just understand the tree. Let's not go into how this tree is generated because I will explain that a little later. Now the tree says, if balance is less than 1800, yes, this side, no, this side, then if Balance is less than 1972, S, yes, this side, no, this side. If income is less than 27,000, again, yes, this side, no, this side. So that's a kind of nested if else statements. If you just think of this, as rules, these are some nested rules. Let's take this observation. What is balance? Balance is 1000. 